Hello and welcome back to my witchy channel. Today is Beltane, so if you are celebrating uh, or if you are watching this video in the future, I hope that you have a blessed Beltane. I hope that you had a good Beltane and that you celebrated in any way that you saw fit that made the day very special to you. In today's video, I will not be talking about Beltane because I missed the boat on that one. Obviously, this is going to be uploaded after the 1st of May, but I am going to be doing an updated altar tour. The last one that I did was in 2020, question mark, when I was living at my mom's house. And since then, I have moved twice. In my last apartment, I did not have an altar. If you remember, if you watched my um, apartment tour, it was just one big room and I didn't have space for an altar, so I just had all of my spiritual items kind of in different places wherever I could fit them basically. But I do have a proper altar set up here in this apartment, so I am going to show you that today. And because it is Beltane, it is decorated lovely, lovely, lovingly. It is decorated with lovely flowers, um, dried calendula, and daisies that I picked earlier today, so I thought it would be the perfect day to show you because she is looking good. By the way, if you're wondering where I got my necklace, I made it myself, and you can actually get your own bone terrarium necklace at my Etsy shop, which is Love Wolf Apothecary. There is currently one in stock and I am hoping to make more in the future. So I will link that in my description below. And also if you check out my YouTube um, kind of about channel page, you can find a link to my shop. That is my promotion for the day. Now, I just want to remind everyone as well, uh, this altar tour, um, I identify as an eclectic pagan, which um, I don't follow any specific rules, I just make up my own, um, but I do follow things or I'm trying to get more into following things that relate to my heritage, which is Celtic paganism. Uh, so everything that I do is very much nature-based. Um, there is not a lot of deity worship, except when it comes to dark goddesses, uh, because that is something that I identify with. So that is kind of the theme of my altar is uh, just eclectic uh, paganism. You are going to see nature, you are going to see kind of standard tools of the trade on there and uh, not too much um, in the in the way of deities or anything like that. But uh, without further ado, let's get on to it. So welcome to my updated altar. It is a lot bigger than the last one, as you can probably tell. And I actually got this beautiful sideboard off of Kijiji from a woman who lives in a city just outside of Toronto. And I love it. It's like totally my aesthetic. It looks medieval, gothic. I don't even know. There's real leather on this part here. This video is not about this sideboard, but I just need to show you the details on this sideboard. It is beautiful. And these are drawers. So, um, let's see if I can open it with one hand. I cannot. Oh, maybe I can. Um, so it's it's messy in here. Um, there's bones in here. There's more bones in there. There's an altar cloth. Um, I have candles in here. There's just like little bits and bobs back there. Charcoal discs for burning charcoal, obviously. And in the other drawer is where I keep a bunch of stuff. Um, for my shop. So there's this little bit here. Uh, there's some seashells and stuff on there. There's just some like labels and packing supplies and stuff. And then underneath is um, different oils, bath salts, herbs, uh, necklaces. There's just a ton of stuff that is for my shop in the bottom there. So we love a practical storage queen. So starting on the left, um, I have this lovely brown apothecary looking bottle that my friend gave me. She has over the years given me some feathers and I have collected my own and so there's just kind of a bouquet of feathers uh, native to Canada. There is a small 
pentagram, which is a Christmas decoration that I keep on my altar just because I believe you should always have a pentagram on your altar for protection. There is a cat skull that I bought from one of my friends. Uh, don't worry, it was ethically sourced. Um, there are a couple of homemade oils over here. Uh, as you can see, the far left one says Lilith. The middle one says Green Man. And the last one is a universal oil. Um, there's a piece of pyrite in front of that because of the ingredients in there. Um, apparently they are stored best next to pyrite. There is a abalone shell over here with uh, two bundles. Um, they are both for smoke cleansing. One is cedar and uh, one is sage and there are rose petals on it. Uh, again, I think this was present in my last altar tour video so it may look familiar to you. So moving on, this is an incense blend that I made. I recently did a seven day descent. Um, if you know anything about shadow work, if you do any shadow work yourself or you've read any books about uh, dark goddesses or dark goddess archetypes or descents, it's kind of like a mental health journey. And I think I might want to do a video on uh, doing a descent yourself, um, getting into shadow work because it is really good, especially if you're struggling with uh, difficult times in your life, uh, either mental health, breakups, death in the family, anything like that. Um, it is a really good way to get through that, to get some insight into your own psyche. Um, obviously therapy and proper mental health resources are always good for that, but they're not always available to everybody. And also just, you can do that in conjunction with doing this uh, since it is more spiritual. So one of the things that I was to do for that journey uh, was make an offering for the dark goddess. And so I created this incense blend and I burned it anytime I did any sort of ritual uh, during that seven day uh, journey to the underworld. <laughs> um, so, there is a piece of amber over here that uh, my ex uh, got me from Poland. There is a besom. There's a second besom. Uh, there's a third besom. And there's a fourth besom that I made myself. <laughs> um, I don't know why there's so many besoms. There's four of them in total. But those were mostly, except for the one that I made, those were just gifted to me and they're they're so tiny and cute. Like, I just like to keep them on my altar, so that's where they stay. Um, this is a card. I think it was from Fox Blood Shop and it came with an order and I just really like the art on it. Like, it's a little art print card. Um, I feel, like, connected to the artwork on it, so I just keep it there. That is a jar of money powder, which... Um, you can also get on my shop, as I mentioned earlier in this video. I'm going to zoom out. Sorry about the zoom noise. This is a beautiful notebook um, that my landlord gave me, actually, for Christmas. I love the artwork on it. It's amazing. And it is just like a plain um, paper notebook. And I actually started using it as a book of shadows. And I started working on it when I was recovering from surgery because I had a lot of time to sit and do nothing. And I haven't picked it up since to continue. And I think that's just because I find trying to decorate my pages, it's fun, but it's also tedious. And I'm currently trying to teach myself how to stop using uh, social media like Instagram and Twitter. I went a week without using either one of them except to post a shop update on my shop Instagram. Um, because I do find that if you stop using them and stop just getting stuck in that scroll hole or whatever you want to call it, where you just endlessly scroll for no reason, you actually have time to do things. So I think now that I've gotten the social media scrolling under control, I can actually go back to working on my Book of Shadows and filling it with all of my vast witchy knowledge. Um, and if you don't know what a Book of Shadows is, it is essentially just a book where you write uh, you can write rituals, you can write personal tenets in there, you can put definitions for things in there if you want. Um, it's kind of just your own little journal on how you practice. And it's completely personal to every person, so none of them will be the same. Um, but mine essentially just has a table of contents, 
some definitions of things and then was going to go into uh, like different kinds of spell work and stuff like that. So yes, I will pick that up soon. Um, there hanging here is a, a clear quartz necklace that I wear quite often. And I just like to keep it here because this is kind of my spiritual place where it can be recharged easily. And a necklace that I showed in a previous video as well um, that one of my friends gave me. It is for intuition and I actually found it very helpful uh, during my my descent that I was doing. So I keep that there as well, again, just so that I can charge it easier. Um, a recent addition is this giant piece of driftwood that I found, or I guess it's a branch. I don't know what you want to call it. It's, it's from a tree. <laughs> um, I decided to hang it up here so that I could hang my dried herbs and flowers on it. And as you can see, there's really nothing on it. I'm waiting for the weather. Oh no, it's going out of focus. What is that about? Okay, that was odd. Um, anyways, so I'm waiting for the better weather so that I can actually go out and pick wildflowers and dry them and then I can use them either in teas, in incense, uh, you know, anything like that. So I, that is my, my hanging stick. So I'm gonna hang stuff off of there. Right now there is some cedar that I uh, was so graciously given from a cedar tree. Uh, yes, I did thank the tree when I took the cedar from it, and I'm going to be using that cedar in incense. I've really gotten into making my own incenses lately, especially for uh, different rituals and for different uh, sabbats. I wanted to make a Beltane one. My cat wants to be heard. Hi, Bast. Okay, mommy's, mommy's doing a video, honey. Okay, so I wanted to make one for Beltane and put it in the store, but I'm running low on uh, supplies, so I need to get more, um, more things to actually put the incense in so that I can put it up in the shop. Um, I'm not trying to talk about my shop a lot, it's just that I do have a lot of things in there and I want people to know, <laughs> especially since I'm not using social media as much. Uh, so yeah, incense. Uh, I will be making more, uh, soon for the store. Next is this large piece of a tree trunk that I found in the winter, um, it was basically just covered in ice and I thought it looked like it would be a good thing to uh, put on my altar and use as, you know, a place to put my cauldron and stuff. So that's, that's what that is. It's a piece of a tree. Um, last weekend, I, I live kind of near the water. So last weekend, I was just jumping around on the rocks, letting the child within me have a gay old time and I looked in the water and I saw this clamshell and I was like oh my god it's huge so I reached my arm in and I pulled it out and yeah now I just have a giant clamshell which is super cool um it was at the start of my journey as well and I was like that's a super cool um feminine symbol I want on my altar so it reminded me of Botticelli's Venus the minute that I saw it and you know, I don't know, there's just something about a something about a clamshell just makes me think of the divine feminine. So I I took it. It was my little treasure for the day. I kind of felt like I was playing Animal Crossing in real life, just hanging out by the beach and picking up shells. So that lives on my altar now. Um if you can kind of see around the cauldron I have a bunch of different crystals they are probably the same ones that were in my last altar tour um, oh also a marble I found a marble in the woods and I just I don't know it was fun to me so I I just decided that it was going to go on my altar uh, so there are just a couple of things here I've sprinkled dried calendula um, around the tree bark just because it is Beltane and I just wanted to bring more kind of flowers and bright colors onto my altar today. And uh, there is an acorn there, there's an acorn there, there is, I don't know if this would be considered a hag stone. Um, it is a stone with a hole all the way through, but I don't know if it's a hag stone or it's just a stone with a hole in it. Like, what's the difference? I'm not sure, but hag stones are interesting to me, so I picked it up. Um, this is the bone that I found in the forest near my mother's house when I was trying to connect with, uh, Bav Katha, so this is Bav Katha's bone. Uh, it's a, she's a Celtic um, deity, so I keep that there. As I said, I am trying to connect with my Celtic pagan heritage. 
And there's just a couple of bay leaves as well because bay leaves, um, they're good for wishing. I have a whole jar of them and uh, sometimes I write wishes on them and then I burn them in the fire in my cauldron and that's just a super uh, simple little spell work thing that you can do, by the way. And bay leaves are super easy to find and dry out. You can get them at like every supermarket probably and like herbal remedy stores and stuff like that. Ah uh, yes. Before I move on to the right side of my altar, I forgot to mention this. It is my selenite wand. Um, when I am casting a circle, I use this to um, direct energy, uh, you know, in all of the directions and above and below. So I don't use a typical wand. I use this selenite point. Um, it's parent. It's supposedly, I believe, selenite is good for. Um, promoting positive energy and also absorbing energy or something like that. So that's why I have that. And on the other side, I have my version of an athame, which is just this oil slick looking knife. Um, I use it for lots of stuff. I use it when I'm out in the woods for cutting plants. Um, it's seen better days for sure. Um, but yeah, I use it to cut cords, I use it for things during ritual, I use it sometimes just to open things. Um, I probably shouldn't do that, there's probably somebody watching this cringing that I don't just use it for like holy and sacred things, but uh, it is what it is. And then right above that there is a shark tooth. Um, I like to have kind of, I don't know, I like to have bones and things that are reminiscent of just animals and wild things on my altar, so that's why there's a cat skull and that's why there is that bone this i'm so lazy this is the money spell jar that i made a video on it when i first moved in here and i had like no furniture um and i i've been meaning to deconstruct it and get rid of the contents like bury them somewhere and oh god i'm just so lazy i just haven't done it so <laughs> that's what that is this is a jar that i am trying to fill with uh tiny seashells and sea glass so I live near the water and sometimes I go down uh, by the lake on the little beaches there and I just kind of trawl for sea glass and if I find any nice pieces, um, I put them in this jar. And this is another jar, uh, it just has pine needles in it. Um, again, that's something that I will likely be using in incense. So um, you should never take more than you need if you're taking something from nature. So I, there's not a surplus of them because I just, I really didn't need that much for what I was doing. So, and I haven't even used them yet. Um, they're just chilling there waiting to be used. Um, as of today, I have picked these gorgeous dandelions, which people, I know people hate dandelions. They're like, they're a weed. They take over my yard, whatever but dandelion tea is so good for you and just dandelions and herbs in general, like they've been used in medicine for thousands of years. So while I understand why people don't like things that they consider weeds in their garden, they're very useful to people who are into herbalism or witchcraft or anything like that. Um, I don't actually drink dandelion tea myself, but because of where I picked them from, it may be unsafe for me to consume them. So. I don't want to risk that, so I'm just not going to be using those for anything that I ingest. And that's a good rule of thumb I've mentioned multiple times. Let's put it on the screen. It's your witch tip of the day. Your witch tip of the day is do not ingest flowers or plants that you pick from urban areas because you don't know what kind of pesticides could be on them and that could be dangerous to your health if you ingest them. This candle's freaking me out. It's like really bent. Um, true story. <laughs> When I started my descent, I was burning these candles and when I was closing the practice after a week and doing an ascent, that probably doesn't make a lot of sense to you if you don't know what I'm talking about, but anyways, it's a thing. It's a, it's a ritual and another ritual. So the descent is essentially descending to the underworld. You spend as much time as you want there. Uh, you really kind of pick apart your wants, your needs. Think about your ego, your psyche, everything like that. Um, and then at the end you do an ascent where essentially you come back up from the underworld. Um, it's a lot related to uh, descent stories such as Persephone and Hades, Psyche and Eros, and um, Inanna and Ereshkigal. So look into those if you're interested. Um, but yeah, I was burning them at the beginning of my, uh, my descent. 
And right at the end of my journey, um, when I was doing my ascent, I wanted to do a dedication to Lilith. Hey girl. Um, right before I did my ascent, since she is a dark goddess and she is often related to Arash Kigal. And this candle would not light. Like for, I could not, no matter what I did, this candle would not light. So I did my dedication to Lilith and, you know, kind of got back into my headspace to do my ascent. And of course, when I went to light the candle, it lit again. And I was just like, okay, I'm trying to have everything look the same way it did when I started my descent. So it's really important. And luckily it did light, but it was just, you know, sometimes you're doing stuff and it's just funny little things like that happen. And you're just, uh, you just got to roll with it. You know what I mean? So I have two Bast statues. I bought this from a store that is no longer open. She's dusty, oh my gosh. Um, called Green Earth, and it's just a store that was in the mall, and you could get like incense there, uh, random presents. There was a lot of Egyptian and witchcraft and medieval style stuff that you could buy. It was a mishmash of stuff. It was a super cool store, but um, I got this bass statue there when I was like 14 years old, and then this one my friend gave me. It's just like a little mini bass. Familiar. Thing number, I don't even know how many at this point. This is my Lilith sigil. Um, and if you watched my last altar tour, you will recognize that. And uh, yep, there's human blood on there. So anyways, not gonna, not gonna go further on that one. Uh, this is a besom that I made. And I had like, I wanna say I had one in my store and it sold to one of my extremely loyal and favoritist customers ever. Um, and then I just have one of my own and it's sitting on my favorite piece of amethyst. Here be my mortar and pestle. It is full of garlic. I had dried out garlic and crushed it to put in uh, Hecate um, amulets that are also in my shop. I just can't stop mentioning my shop today, but a lot of things are related to it right now, okay? So like, let me live. So it's got garlic in there. Um, that was to put in the Hecate amulet, and then also, since I was doing my whole um, dark goddess descent thing, I decided to just leave it on my altar as an offering to Hecate, so that I had uh, something for Hecate and something for Lilith and uh, the dark goddess incense over there, and it was very trifecta, so I just kind of left it there. Here is another branch. Um, it was on my last altar as well. It was just something that I found in the woods at, when I was living at my mom's house temporarily and um, I still kind of want to find a second one to go on the other end of the altar but it has to be super similar to this and I just haven't found one that looks close enough. And then I think the last thing to really talk about is this. Um, it's just a hanging pentagram decoration and it has a um, clear um, I guess, what do you call it? Like an angel aura quartz or just an aura quartz? Uh, it doesn't want to focus, I don't think. Um, but so I also, again, I'm sorry for my, for mentioning my shop, but I, I usually have these in my shop as well. So they are pentagrams, um, that you can hang wherever, like above your doorway, on your altar. I know it's, if anyone is like a firefighter watching, they're probably like, that candle is way too close. I assure you there is space between them and I am watching all of the flames on this altar like a hawk. But again, uh, pentagrams, um, obviously they represent all of the elements, spirit, akasha, whatever you want to call it. They're perfect for protection. So hence I have one hanging above my altar for those reasons. And also with the nature aspect, I have uh, wrapped it in twine that has leaves on it. So yes, that's that's another thing that I do have in my store at times. So basically what I'm just saying is check out my store. Um, but that is it. That is my whole, I'm seeing if I can get the whole thing in like frame over here. Um, yes, this is my whole altar setup and it's lovely and I can't wait to add more things to it. And uh, that's it. And I... I guess the only thing I didn't really mention was the cauldron um, on it. I mean, cauldrons are multi-purpose. Uh, right now there's a candle on it. Sometimes I burn candles in it. And I've been burning a lot of my homemade incense on charcoal discs actually uh, inside it. So inside it, it's full of sand and like just ash. 
uh, from burning incense and then I will just put the charcoal disc on top of all of the sand and ash um, because it gets really hot like the whole cauldron gets hot so fire safety tip if you're burning charcoal please for the love of god do it in a fire retardant thing vessel uh it's the cauldron is perfect because it's cast iron um, but it will get extremely hot so don't touch the cauldron if you have a charcoal disc burning in there and um yeah i also have to i don't want to show you the inside of the cauldron because it's really dirty i have to season it and i think the next time i season my cauldron i will film it and i will show you guys how to season a cauldron because it's something that you should do um and I guess if anyone owns cast iron pots, you probably have done that something similar before to keep your pots in, you know, good shape. But yes, uh, so that's it. And uh, I guess we'll say goodbye to my altar now. If you haven't seen my last altar tour video, I will put it here or here or somewhere. And you can click on that and see that. Uh, it is my actually most popular video on my channel because altar tours are extremely popular, but I also implore you to check out my other videos because I do work very hard on them. Uh, this is just a hobby for me, but I do like sharing what I know and I, I do like kind of documenting my own journey online. So if you would like to check out any of my other videos, that would be awesome. Please don't forget to give this video a like if you liked it. If you want to become a part of my witchy family, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed day. Bonk.